I'm really pumped about this video. If you're looking for a full review of the new Hobie Passport, or maybe you're interested in the differences between the smaller version versus the larger version, or maybe even you've heard that we're giving away a new 12 foot Hobie Passport, well, this is the video that you want. So the brand new Hobie Passport in Bay Sands has hit the market and there's been some pretty cool upgrades since I first reviewed this kayak back in 2019. In this video, it'll be a full review of the product and you're gonna be left with everything that you need to know about the kayak. First, we're gonna talk about the kayak itself and how it was designed. I'm gonna talk about and share my opinions on the differences between that 10.5 and the 12 foot models that are on the market at the moment. Secondly, we'll talk about some of the features that come with the kayak, and then thirdly, what you can do with the kayak, because stock mode in this kayak is very much stock mode. I think you do need to add a couple of things on here to make the kayak really pop. This is what the kayak looks like on the water. So before we get into the meat of this, a couple of points. Hunter Watersports have donated this Hobie Passport for the review. If you're enjoying this content or any of the content on the channel, and it's helping you make decisions about your fishing or kayaking experience, I'd urge you to support the people that help me make the content for you. I use these guys on a weekly basis. If it's a new live well pump that I need, I go to them. When I need to update the graph or sounder, I go to them. And when I need a new kayak, and because I'm on the other side of the country, I go to them because they've got delivery in an online store. So support those guys, and just maybe when I continue to do these reviews, you will find more and more donations coming. The 2021 Hobie Compass review will be out soon, but that's not this video. I'll get to the kayak giveaway in a moment, but this review 100% is made possible by Hunter Water Sports. Thank you. My thoughts on the product and the kayak though are 100% brought to you by me. The first thing that popped out to me in the 12 foot model was the width and the size that the base of the kayak had to it. It rode really well and it was quite unexpected how well it rode in the water. I saw it in some difficult weather and some nicer weather and the rudder was actually really responsive in both of those conditions. I'll throw you some cutaway here but I had some windy weather and I was hit by some waves and did not feel uncomfortable at all. Never did I feel out of control, even when the waves were in, coming from that really awkward rear quarter uh, of the kayak. It wasn't too top heavy and I felt stable through the chop. I think here the key with this kayak is the 12 foot mark. Now, it seems to be like the gravy little area of kayaking. You'll see that the most successful ranges in the kayak market are all about that 12 foot, and particularly for Hobie as well. The 12 foot mark is not so large that it is cumbersome on the ramp or when you're loading, it's actually quite doable, but it's also large enough to provide you a nice, stable, and safe platform on the water. At 12 foot, you can produce a kayak that's got some nice width to it and is quite buoyant. So you can get into the shallows where boaters cannot. And here's an example of that. You can see the boat over there on the edge and we are here directly below the drone, targeting these fish 
that a boater cannot get to. It's one of the main benefits of fishing out of the kayak. Fish will go up into the shallows to get away from the boaters, particularly on those long weekends or the weekends that we all like to go fishing. There's boats everywhere. A kayak can get places that a fish is hiding out because there's no pressure there. So that's the kayak stability. In terms of maneuverability, Hobie get a big tick for the rudder. I was expecting to have to talk about it, but I was actually expecting to trash this in this review. I am not doing that. Unlike the other models of Hobie, they've gone with the solid durable stick of plastic material that simply drives the rudder left and right. It's a direct linkage to the handle that's up the front and it's different to the traditional Hobie rudder that you might see. Usually there's a string pulley system where we have to crank up the tension as required. And the byproduct of that tension is that there's often lag in the system. So we move the rudder, takes a moment to bite, and then the kayak goes. This runner has none of that cabling. It is a direct response to the handle. And I have to say, it's the best feeling rudder that I have felt on a Hobie. Again, I was expecting to trash this component and talk about how uninventive and how cheap it looked, but the whole keep and simple methodology has really worked in this scenario. The last point I'll make here before we get to the giveaway is the 10.5 versus the 12 foot model. This kayak, the 12 foot model, dwarfs the 10.5 in all categories from performance, utility, and comfort. A few years ago, I heavily reviewed the 10.5 and this is the video for that. And I described it as the go-kart of the Hobie range. And whilst I still think that is correct and it is a good kayak, with the introduction of the 12, it makes this 10.5 obsolete, in my opinion completely obsolete. If you're trying to decide whether the cost is the issue, because I know there's a couple of hundred dollars between both models, I'd wait the extra month till I had the money and then I would buy the 12. If it was weight, well, these are the specs. We're talking three kilos or seven, eight pound, I think the conversion is. It's not a huge difference. Generally, you'll have it on a card anyway, so big deal. The 10 and a half, in my opinion, is mainly a coved, sheltered water, calm water type kayak whilst the 12, it can start to handle weather. So if you're out in the water one day and weather kicks up that you're not expecting, maybe you're in a place that has a little bit of weather roll through. It is the kayak that if I was to consider my family in the 10.5 versus the 12, the 12 every day of the week. So here is the giveaway. We are giving away a 2021 Hobie Passport 12.0 in Bay Sands. Courtesy of Hunter Water Sports who have donated this kayak. I'll be randomly selecting somebody using a random wheel generator thing and they will walk away with the kayak. I'll also add a Burley Pro Bumper Bro to the front of the kayak as well and that'll help protect the nose of the kayak. Now, I'm here in the state of Victoria, Australia and I don't care where you are in the world, you can enter. If you're an Aussie and you win, we'll get the kayak to you, we'll organize that. If you're a foreigner and you win, well, you're gonna have to pay for the shipping costs. If that's a bit too much for you and you can't afford that, I'll sell the kayak here and I will give you what it is worth. I'll transfer the money to you overseas. But that means it's a win-win for everybody. So to enter, you're going to need to do two things and I'm gonna lay these out here for you so that there is no misunderstandings. The first on this channel, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below on what your favorite color passport is out of these two colors here. And if you do not like either of them, tell me what color you would like to see this product in. That's the first thing that you need to do. The second thing that you need to do is head over to the Hunter Water Sports, either Facebook or Instagram page. You've got both options just in case you don't have both. Follow their page and find this post. On that post, you're gonna to need to tag three friends. After tagging your three friends, you'll also need to share that post. The lucky winner will be announced on both the HWS Facebook and Instagram and my Facebook and Instagram pages also. So make sure you put those bells on as well as on this video so that you get the announcement. Again, a big thank you to HWS for the donation to the channel. This is the biggest giveaway that we've been able to provide. Support those who support us and hopefully we get more of it in the future.
So let's go through some of the features and let's talk about the cockpit area because that is going to be the main area that you interact with whilst you're on the water. Here's some cutaway, but I'll start with the drive. There's been an awesome upgrade with the Mirage Drive in this kayak model in 2021. They used to come with the original Hobie Drive that many models haven't used for years now. And now the kayak comes with the new drive. And more importantly, it comes with the kick up fins. So you're gonna avoid damaging the leading edge of the fins as they impact submerged objects or maybe when you're launching at a ramp. If you're new to the Mirage Drive fins as well, they let you flutter when you're in shallow water and that's how I got into those shots early that I've shown you. I was using small fin like movements and you can see you just need to like make small little feet movements and those fins will stay up and propel you along. And that's one of the main advantages to this style of propulsion. The second point in that cockpit area is the side track mounts and the bungee cord. I love these track mounts because I hate the idea of ever drilling into the kayak to get my accessories in and out. I like a rod holder, maybe a beer mug, a graph or a sounder on one side. I want the option to easily put it in, move it forward and aft based on my arm length. And also sometimes I'm just going for a recreational kayak. I don't want all my gear on. And then other times I want full Monty, my gear everywhere. So that track mount gives me the accessibility to have a clean kayak or a fully decked one without having to drill anywhere and I hate drilling kayaks. I'll show you some other footage here, but you'll notice some padding adjacent to the center hatch that's going to provide you some grip when you're standing up and moving around. And standing up in this kayak, like I mentioned before, is not a problem. There's some really nice stability around it. The 10 and a half, on the other hand, you only ever want to do that in nice calm water with minimal wind. That circle hatch though, you should get rid of it. Rectangular hatches every day of the week and, and any good Hobie store will be able to do that for you. They're bigger, you can fit more in them and if you'll upgrade it, you'll then have a spare round hatch that you can move to the front and then open up the front area as a storage, internal storage area as well. By doing this one upgrade, you double the internal storage area that you've got on the kayak. The seat here is nice and wide and will cater for the larger men amongst us. I will never sit on a padded cushion again, so you've got that nice bit of suspension in the netting there. And it's big enough to move around on, sit sideways if you want, if you're a smaller fella. Underneath here, you've got the larger transducer plate, and hope you've really led the area or the kayak space with that transducer interoperability with kayaks. I'm sure you're picking up a theme here, but again, it means that you do not need to drill or mount a transducer on the bottom. You can just mount it to this plate, and that plate is interchangeable as required. The very last point I'll make on the features and design of the kayak is the product that it is made from, the plastic itself. The Passport series is cheaper than the remaining Hobie series, and the remaining Hobie series is made out of this rotor-molded, durable plastic that is a really premium product. What you're paying for in the Passport is quality, it's just not top tier. The other way to think about the Passport series is that you're getting access to a lot of the painted featureful items that you typically get in a Hobie space just at a cheaper price. It's basically two halves of the kayak that are stuck together and you'll see that in the seam that you see around the side of the kayak. The other Hobie series kayaks are all one piece. This one is two stuck together. The only challenging thing that I found with it was that I left this brown scummy water on it here for about two weeks before I got around to cleaning the hull itself and it was a bit difficult to get off. Uh, I needed a bit of a scrubbing brush and some soap to get it off, so I'd recommend that if you go through some dirty water that you go ahead and make the clean before it does set in there. So upgrades to the kayak that will really make this kayak pop. The first is that rectangular hatch and then you move that circle hatch to the front to double your internal storage area. That's a bit of a no-brainer for me. The next one are mounting options for those tracks on the side there. You get a couple of adjustable ones that become variable that you can put in and clip out. There's a couple on the market, I'll link some below, but I'd definitely be looking to accessorize using those track mounts on the side. Lastly, unlike a lot of the other products on the Hobie series, that transducer plate I mentioned before is a fixed one. It's not a guardian plate that retracts into the hull to protect your transducer. With that in mind, I'll also plug a product that 
happens to help this channel as well, but the Burley Pro transducer cover over the top. If you're gonna put a transducer on the top of it, make sure you throw a cover on so you can protect the transducer and you don't affect the image quality that's coming through on your graph or sounder. Do those things and you'll have a really nice kayak that you can really enjoy on the water. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. Remember that bomb giveaway that we've got going on. Thanks very much to Hunter Water Sports for providing that product for you guys. Make sure you support them. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.